August 21, the Rebellion of Israel. On August 14, during the seventh year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, some of the leaders of Israel came to request a message from the Lord. They sat down in front of me to wait for his reply. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, tell the leaders of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. How dare you come to ask me for a message? As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I will tell you nothing. Son of man, Bring charges against them and condemn them. Make them realize how detestable the sins of their ancestors really were. Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. When I chose Israel, when I revealed myself to the descendants of Jacob in Egypt, I took a solemn oath that I, the Lord, would be their God. I took a solemn oath that day that I would bring them out of Egypt to a land I had discovered and explored for them, a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the best of all lands anywhere. Then I said to them, Each of you, get rid of the vile images you are so obsessed with. Do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt, for I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and would not listen. They did not get rid of the vile images they were obsessed with or forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I threatened to pour out my fury on them to satisfy my anger while they were still in Egypt. But I didn't do it, for I acted to protect the honor of my name. I would not allow shame to be brought on my name among the surrounding nations who saw me reveal myself by bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. So I brought them out of Egypt and led them into the wilderness. There I gave them my decrees and regulations so they could find life by keeping them. And I gave them my Sabbath days of rest as a sign between them and me. It was to remind them that I am the Lord who had set them apart to be holy. But the people of Israel rebelled against me and they refused to obey my decrees there in the wilderness. They wouldn't obey my regulations, even though obedience would have given them life. They also violated my Sabbath days. So I threatened to pour out my fury on them, and I made plans to utterly consume them in the wilderness. But again I held back in order to protect the honor of my name before the nations who had seen my power in bringing Israel out of Egypt. But I took a solemn oath against them in the wilderness. I swore I would not bring them into the land I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful place on earth. For they had rejected my regulations, refused to follow my decrees, and violated my Sabbath days. Their hearts were given to their idols. Nevertheless, I took pity on them and held back from destroying them in the wilderness." Then I warned their children not to follow in their parents' footsteps, defiling themselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God, I told them. Follow my decrees, pay attention to my regulations, and keep my Sabbath days holy, for they are a sign to remind you that I am the Lord your God. But their children, too, rebelled against me. They refused to keep my decrees and follow my regulations, even though obedience would have given them life. And they also violated my Sabbath days. So again, I threatened to pour out my fury on them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my judgment against them to protect the honor of my name before the nations that had seen my power in bringing them out of Egypt. But I took a solemn oath against them in the wilderness. I swore I would scatter them among all the nations, because they did not obey my regulations. They scorned my decrees by violating my Sabbath days and longing for the idols of their ancestors. I gave them over to worthless decrees and regulations that would not lead to life. I let them pollute themselves with the very gifts I had given them, and I allowed them to give their firstborn children as offerings to their gods, so I might devastate them and remind them that I alone am the Lord. Judgment and Restoration Therefore, Son of Man, give the people of Israel this message from the Sovereign Lord. Your ancestors continued to blaspheme and betray me. For when I brought them into the land I had promised them, they offered sacrifices on every high hill and under every green tree they saw. They roused my fury as they offered up sacrifices to their gods. They brought their perfumes and incense and poured out their liquid offerings to them. I said to them, What is this high place where you are going? This kind of pagan shrine has been called Bama, high place, ever since. 
Therefore give the people of Israel this message from the Sovereign Lord. Do you plan to pollute yourselves just as your ancestors did? Do you intend to keep prostituting yourselves by worshiping vile images? For when you offer gifts to them and give your little children to be burned as sacrifices, you continue to pollute yourselves with idols to this day. Should I allow you to ask for a message from me, O people of Israel? As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will tell you nothing. You say, we want to be like the nations all around us who serve idols of wood and stone. But what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I will rule over you with an iron fist in great anger and with awesome power. And in anger I will reach out with my strong hand and powerful arm, and I will bring you back from the lands where you are scattered. I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations, and there I will judge you face to face. I will judge you there just as I did your ancestors in the wilderness after bringing them out of Egypt says the Sovereign Lord. I will examine you carefully and hold you to the terms of the covenant. I will purge you of all those who rebel and revolt against me. I will bring them out of the countries where they are in exile, but they will never enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O people of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Go right ahead and worship your idols. But sooner or later, you will obey me and will stop bringing shame on my holy name by worshiping idols. For on my holy mountain, the great mountain of Israel, says the Sovereign Lord, the people of Israel will someday worship me, and I will accept them. There I will require that you bring me all your offerings and choice gifts and sacrifices. When I bring you home from exile, you will be like a pleasing sacrifice to me. And I will display my holiness through you as all the nations watch. Then, when I have brought you home to the land I promised with a solemn oath to give to your ancestors, you will know that I am the Lord. You will look back on all the ways you defiled yourselves and will hate yourselves because of the evil you have done. You will know that I am the Lord, O people of Israel, when I have honored my name by treating you mercifully in spite of your wickedness. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Judgment Against the Negev Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face the south, and speak out against it. Prophesy against the brushlands of the Negev. Tell the southern wilderness this is what the sovereign Lord says. Hear the word of the Lord. I will set you on fire, and every tree, both green and dry, will be burned. The terrible flames will not be quenched, and will scorch everything from south to north. And everyone in the world will see that I, the Lord, have set this fire. It will not be put out. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, they are saying of me, he only talks in riddles. The Lord's Sword of Judgment. Then this message came to me from the Lord, Son of man, turn and face Jerusalem and prophesy against Israel and her sanctuaries. Tell her, This is what the Lord says, I am your enemy, O Israel, and I am about to unsheath my sword to destroy your people, the righteous and the wicked alike. Yes, I will cut off both the righteous and the wicked. I will draw my sword against everyone in the land from south to north. Everyone in the world will know that I am the Lord. My sword is in my hand, and it will not return to its sheath until its work is finished. Son of man, groan before the people, groan before them with bitter anguish and a broken heart. When they ask why you are groaning, tell them, I groan because of the terrifying news I have heard. When it comes true, the boldest heart will melt with fear. All strength will disappear. Every spirit will faint. Strong knees will become as weak as water. And the Sovereign Lord says, It is coming. It's on its way. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, give the people this message from the Lord. A sword, a sword is being sharpened and polished. It is sharpened for terrible slaughter and polished to flesh like lightning. Now will you laugh? Those far stronger than you have fallen beneath its power. 
Yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished. It is being prepared for the executioner. Son of man, cry out and wail. Pound your thighs in anguish, for that sword will slaughter my people and their leaders. Everyone will die. It will put them all to the test. What chance do they have, says the sovereign Lord? Son of man, prophesy to them and clap your hands. Then take the sword and brandish it twice, even three times, to symbolize the great massacre, the great massacre facing them on on every side. Let their hearts melt with terror, for the sword glitters at every gate. It flashes like lightning and is polished for slaughter. O sword, slash to the right, then slash to the left. Wherever you will, wherever you want, I too will clap my hands, and I will satisfy my fury. I, the Lord, have spoken. A Signpost for Babylon's King Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, Make a map and trace two routes on it for the sword of Babylon's king to follow. Put a signpost on the road that comes out of Babylon where the road forks into two, one road going to Ammon and its capital Rabbah, and the other to Judah and fortified Jerusalem. The king of Babylon now stands at the fork, uncertain whether to attack Jerusalem or Rabbah. He calls his magicians to look for omens. They cast lots by shaking arrows from the quiver. They inspect the livers of animal sacrifices. The omen in his right hand says, Jerusalem, with battering rams, his soldiers will go against the gates, shouting for the kill. They will put up siege towers and build ramps against the walls. The people of Jerusalem will think it is a false omen because of their treaty with the Babylonians. But the king of Babylon will remind the people of their rebellion. Then he will attack and capture them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Again and again you remind me of your sin and your guilt. You don't even try to hide it. In everything you do, your sins are obvious for all to see. So now the time of your punishment has come. O you corrupt and wicked prince of Israel, your final day of reckoning is here. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take off your jeweled crown, for the old order changes. Now the lowly will be exalted, and the mighty will be brought down. Destruction! Destruction! I will surely destroy the kingdom, and it will not be restored until the one appears who has the right to judge it. Then I will hand it over to him. A Message for the Ammonites And now, son of man, prophesy concerning the Ammonites and their mockery. Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. A sword, a sword is drawn for your slaughter. It is polished to destroy, flashing like lightning. Your prophets have given false visions, and your fortune tellers have told lies. The sword will fall on the necks of the wicked, for whom the day of final reckoning has come. Now return the sword to its sheath, for in your own country, the land of your birth, I will pass judgment upon you. I will pour out my fury on you and blow on you with the fire of my anger. I will hand you over to cruel men who are skilled in destruction. You will be fuel for the fire, and your blood will be spilled in your own land. You will be utterly wiped out, your memory lost to history, for I, the Lord, have spoken. The Sins of Jerusalem Now this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, are you ready to judge Jerusalem? Are you ready to judge this city of murderers? Publicly denounce her detestable sins and give her this message from the Sovereign Lord. O city of murderers, doomed and damned, city of idols, filthy and foul, you are guilty because of the blood you have shed. You are defiled because of the idols you have made. Your day of destruction has come. You have reached the end of your years. I will make you an object of mockery throughout the world. O infamous city, filled with confusion, you will be mocked by people far and near. Every leader in Israel who lives within your walls is bent on murder. Fathers and mothers are treated with contempt. Foreigners are forced to pay for protection. Orphans and widows are wronged and oppressed among you. You despise my holy things and violate my Sabbath days of rest. People accuse others falsely and send them to their death. 
You are filled with idol worshippers and people who do obscene things. Men sleep with their fathers' wives and have intercourse with women who are menstruating. Within your walls live men who commit adultery with their neighbors' wives, who defile their daughters-in-law, or who rape their own sisters. There are hired murderers, lone racketeers, and extortioners everywhere. They never even think of me and my commands, says the Sovereign Lord. But now I clap my hands in indignation over your dishonest gain and bloodshed. How strong and courageous will you be in my day of reckoning? I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do what I said. I will scatter you among the nations and purge you of your wickedness. And when I have been dishonored among the nations because of you, you will know that I am the Lord.